Alrighty, so today is basically your basic how to spin. This is the fiber that I am going to be spinning. I'm going to come right on up here so you can get a good look at it. It is what's known as a silk hanky. And one of the cool things about silk hankies is that, well, they're silk. I'll show you drafting in a sec. The spinning of it, once you've drafted it, this is a wrist to staff for spindlers. It's, um, I actually just finished knitting it today. So we're all good and golden with that. Uh, pretty much the idea is that it holds all of the pre-drafted roving. I am a huge fan of pre-drafting. And uh, I also go through and draft a little bit as I go. Some things to keep in mind with silk is that it has a hugely long staple. You know, if you're drafting with wool, about, you know, that's maybe four inches. If that's far enough you're, you can pull on it. You can't do that with silk. You have to actually pull no less than about seven inches out to start actually getting that draft going. And um, most of the recommendations I've seen have been about 12 inches. So when you're getting ready to spin, you want to actually have something going. I'm doing it a little bit thick for the way that I've been spinning it before. And because this is a nice light uh, purpley pink rosy color, um, I've got a nice dark background so you can see it better. And you just start spinning. And this is not spinning terribly evenly, but it's getting there. One of the things with spinning is that if you pull at an angle, you can control the twist better. And when you pull it straight, the twist snaps all the way up. So, getting it going again. I tuck it into my arm a lot. 90 degree angle. Make sure I've got about what I want. And at the end, I'm making sure that there's a little bit of... Here, next one up. And see, this is one where I need to draft a little bit more. But it's starting to thicken back up to here uh, before I let it snap. You don't necessarily want to let it get um, too thin at the top. Otherwise, you run the risk, winding it onto the spindle, you run the risk of uh, basically drafting yourself right, uh, right off the yarn, off the roving. And just continuing to do that. Something to note here is that um, every spindle is going to spin just a little bit differently, and especially if you do your if you make your own. Making your own spindles is awesome, and part of that is because it's really hard to get an actually perfect outer circle. Um, and where now this is slubbing a little bit up at the top. That's not I'm showing this off. That's not quite an even yarn. But that's one of the reasons why you ply. Plying is almost as magical as blocking. Plying for yarn is almost as magical as blocking is for knitting. So away we go. And as you're looking at this, you may notice that there are uh, two colors going on. And I'm going to wrap this up and take this off. Oh, by the by, as you're going through, you don't necessarily pull off of this like, ooh, I'm just keep continually going. You do go through and, pull and unwind a bit so that you have room before you go. So. Ha. Silk hankies, and I'm going to come up a little bit closer so you can see this. Now, I've already pulled off um, about three hankies from the stack. The entire stack when I bought it was about three quarters of an ounce, and um, I bought it in a little boutique yarn. It's hand dyed. Um, I had a with nature, natural fibers, <laughs> um, so it was a little. You know, not exactly your cheap stuff, and the fact that it's silky, that just kind of adds to it. Um, so when you're pulling it apart, this little edge right here is one edge of a hanky. 
um, notice that there's a lot of edges in there. And as you're pulling it apart, you can kind of tell that there's a lot of cobwebbiness to it. This stuff grips. And I mean it grips. And pulling back. I'm going to set the rest of my stack off to the side. And this looks really cobwebby. It also looks really thick. And the reason for that, I don't know if you can see it all that well, there's actually more than one hanky here. So yes, this stuff is very thin. And grabby. The uh, suggestions that I keep seeing are exfoliate your hands. I like Mary Kay's Satin Hand Stuff. Totally awesome. Uh, make sure that the moisturizer you use is non-greasy so you don't uh, get all skidgy with your fibers. And then one of the ways of draft, basically if you're going to pre-draft it the way that I like to do, well I think I've got an extra, yep. I had more than two hankies on that one. So what I'm finding is the way that I like to pre-draft this, because again, I like to pre-draft, is you go through you make a hole and you just pull it apart and continue to pull it apart and continue to pull it apart. And did I mention you just keep on pulling it apart? And then I go through, like I said, going through and just making it all nice and even. And yeah, this part's pretty thin worry about it. And just pulling it. And since I don't really have a problem with going through and doing a little extra drafting while I'm going, when I get to a decent stopping point, I'm just going to go through and break it. And now you have one uh, pre-drafted set of roving, which at this point I would wrap, wrap onto my distaff, but since my distaff is otherwise occupied, I shall just go through and make a bird's nest. Or, in other words, just wrap it around my hand a lot. And I got one of the other hankies. Yeah. Just in case you were wondering, this grabs. <laughs> like cobweb. And the mewing down there is my cat. Now, another way to draft it, which I haven't really done much of, because, well, I'm just getting started with spinning silk, is to pull from the center. And this is more a draft-as-you-go type of... Uh, type of deal. And for me, I would make extremely fine yarn this way because I totally overdraft when I'm going. Ah, did I mention grabby and cobwebby? Okay. And now we'll see how well this posts to YouTube.